Hello everyone, uh, and this is uh, the next and I think final part of tutorial about gardening system. We have added flexibility to create a garden, to plant seeds, uh, to remove weeds from them. I don't think that I need to, to add a system to fertilize garden, to water garden. It's a very thick system and uh, not everyone needs them, so today I think that we're gonna fix one issue that we have and uh, we will uh, make uh, it possible to collect plant and add a health. So let's talk about an issue, let's flip home and uh, now let's move to this slope. And the problem is that we can add spawn and nectar on heat even on such slopes but we should not we should be able to create it on a plain landscape or, or small slopes so let's fix it let's navigate to a whole component and here to the place where we are creating uh, um, when where we are spawning an actor this is a function trace on attack so here we're gonna check a normal a normal vector of a hit so let's break it let's break this vector here and uh, we need to make a branch we need to make a branch x is gonna be in the range of uh, minus uh, zero, for example, one to zero one, and y, and the same for y, and if both of them are in these ranges, then we're gonna spawn a garden place theoretically. Let's check it out. Okay, can I? No, I can't. I can do it here, but I can't do it all here already. So let's increase the range. Um, not minus zero. Let's make it minus zero one five minus two one five, like this, and start it again. Now let's try it again. So you can play with these parameters, the bigger they are, the, uh, the more slope can be changed. And if I will go here, I think that I will not be able to make garden on such slope. But down here, I already can. And uh, here I have a big uh, hill. Uh, not just a big, but it uh, goes up on a very big angle, so I can't create it here and here also. So I will make these values a little bit bigger, I think, uh, in whole component, minus 0, 2 to 0, 2, like this. And that's all for this issue. Now. Let's go back to a plant. So we have a BP plant parent, and let's add a new variable called plant health. And by default, it will be 100. And what we're gonna do? We're gonna decrease health of a plant every time a weed is spawned, or maybe not we should have uh, every growth stick if there are some weeds still on the plant then plant he uh, plant's health will uh, uh, be decreased so health damage is gonna be not seven but maybe let's make it three. Oh no f yeah three Th three for now so what we gonna do on the plant parent, 
we have a plant health. And uh, we will create one more variable called plant health per grow tick. By default, it will be zero. And what we're gonna do on the grow loop function, we're gonna get plant health, subtract, subtract plant health grow per tick. And set plant health like this. And then back to garden place, in place where we are spawning a wheat and changing a growth factor. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase this plant health grow health per grow tick. We're gonna increase it. So for each plant, as we have done with the uh, growth factor we're gonna get health health per grow tick and set health grow per tick and it is gonna be this plus every our wheat has grow speed damage and we have health damage and we should append this health damage to this per tick like this and we should do an opposite to that when we are removing a wheat if we have removed the wheat then we should not uh, deal damage every plant tick so back to on wheat destroyed Next to changing the growth factor, we're gonna just copy and do the same. Health damage from wheat, like this. And uh, target, we need connect target, like this. So that's how plant's health will be decreased from 100 to some value. Also, we don't need to clamp it. Because it can be negative, I think. Mm, no, let's clamp it. Let's clamp it. It will be correct way to deal with it. And every time we set in a health, we're clamping it between 0 and 100. <coughs> now, when we collect plant, we can collect it in, other, in different ways. I will do it with my interaction system. We need to know how much. Uh, I don't know in English equivalent how much vegetables uh, or fruits uh, our plant gonna give us. So let's open a plant structure and it has name, seed, uh, growth speed, water consumption is not needed, actor, growth states, and let's add uh, <coughs> something like um, amount of. Um, I don't know, I'll just translate it to know how it is in English. Okay, by the way, it's just fruit. So, how much fruit uh, our plant gives us. So. We need a new field called amount of fruits and it will be an integer value. Also, in my case, for example, I want my tomatoes to give me not a constant amount of tomatoes, but I want it to vary from, for example, I need every bush of tomatoes give me from three tomatoes to seven tomatoes. So I will add new variable, call it is randomly generated count, and it will be boolean. And here I will go amount, create amount range min, it will be an integer, and amount range max, it will also be an integer. Now 
back to DT plants data table and we should fill these fields. So amount of roots, uh, I will leave it zero because I will use a randomly generated count. So I will uh, mark this as true and my tomato will give me from three tomatoes to 10 tomatoes. No, just from five to 12. Oh yes, from five to 12 tomatoes. Close it and to the deep plant parent. So it depends on your project, how your um, picking up uh, is uh, working. In my case, when I'm interacting with something, an event on pickup is called. So I will do a logic of picking up, a, collecting uh, fruits here on event on pickup. But that only works for mine, for me. So what are we gonna do here? Here we're gonna count how much fruits we can receive depending on plant health and grow progress. So let's create a function and name it count uh, fruits amount factor. And what it will do by default, let's create a local variable called default factor. By default it is one. If everything is fine in this plant, it, its health is at maximum, its growth progress is one, then we have uh, default factor one. And uh, if growth progress, for example, is zero five, let's, for example, just get a default factor and multiply it by growth progress. Let's get growth progress. and uh, mm, multiply it by default default factor so if our tomatoes should give us 10 tomatoes when its grow progress is one it will return us 10 tomatoes if its grow progress is uh, half then it will tur will return us five tomatoes but it is not very realistic that uh, half grown uh, half grown uh, tomato will give us a half of tomatoes so what we need to do we need to check for example let's get grow progress and if it is in range in range so if it is in range of one zero to zero five then default factor will be uh, for example uh, grow progress divided by two so we divide in grow progress by two and uh, setting default factor so if grow progress is in a range of zero to zero five <clears throat> then instead of 10 tomatoes on a half of a grow, it will return us uh, two tomatoes or one tomato. Maybe I will divide it even by three. Grow progress divided by three, it will be, and it will be a default factor. In another case, we're multiplying our default factor on grow progress and setting default factor to this value. So if it is in range of 0, 5 to 1, then we're using this algorithm. Uh, not algorithm, this uh, computations. Now, what we're gonna do is we need to change this factor depending on health. It is much uh, simpler, so we will just count uh, plant health factor. So we'll get plant health divided, divide 100. 100 is maximum health of a plant. Divide 100. No, we need divide plant health on 100, and we will receive uh, some value between 0 and 1. 
talking about how, how much health has remain, is remaining. And we just multiply default factor on it. Multiplying default factor on this. Or Or in this case, so uh, that's how it works. And let's set default factor to this value. Okay, here it is. And after that, after everything of it, let's add the return node and return. Oops, let's make a sequence. And first we will count this factor, and second we will return, and we will return this factor. Just connect it here and name it factor, like this. Okay, now back to, in my case, on pickup function. Oh no, not even on pickup. I don't need to do it. This I have uh, it here. I uh, already have a component item data component and what I need to do in my plant I need to let me think a little bit when we should uh, change an amount of okay let's add a new variable and call amount of fruits and it will be an integer. By default, it is zero. And now, on every grow loop, on every grow loop tick, every time it is called, we will change this amount of fruits. So here, what we're gonna do? We're gonna get plant info, get, split it. Here is how it looks like, and we should check. Let's add a branch. If it is a randomly generated count. Then we are generating, we are setting amount of fruits, and it will be a random integer in a range, and range is as plant info amount range min and range max. These parameters that we've created in structure, and this is what happening on true, on false, we are setting this to our constant value plant info amount of fruits, like this. Mm, like this. After we've done all of this, uh, we should, before we've set them, we should multiply them on count fruits amount factor. So we're calling this function both on true and false, and let's make count fruits amount factor a pure function, like this. And let's multiply in this case on a factor and uh, set it here. And uh, what? On true, we're setting this one. Why? And we are multiplying this constant amount of fruits here, and we're multiplying this randomly select on this factor and setting it here like this. So. And now every grow tick we have uh, a, an amount of fruit that will be collected. Now on collect, uh, th this depends on you how much fruit you will uh, receive. In my case, I will change item data component and uh, will change quantity. So uh, like so here, I'm gonna do like this. So here is the way how you count an amount of fruits that you will select. The way you're adding it into your inventory is depends on your systems in your project only. So I will get item data, data component and set quantity to amount of fruits. Like this. And on pickup. I will uh, destroy on pickup. I will just destroy this tomato, this actor. 
you don't need this actor anymore after pick up or maybe you need to and, and uh, that also depends on you in my case I will just destroy it I'm destroying an actor and uh, what we're gonna do uh, what else we're gonna do I will just name collect tomatoes next go let's go back to garden place and uh, the thing we need we need to do is uh, to subscribe on uh, destroying of this uh, plant so on uh, add plant when we're adding it let's bind on destroy bind event on destroy and create a function to create event create matching function and call it on plant collected because on plant collected we don't need to uh, spawn any weeds if that was only one plant there so on plant collected destroyed actor we're gonna get plants and remove item and we we're gonna remove this destroyed actor but we have to cast it first cast to bp plant parent we're casting it and removing it from an array and that's it that's it uh, so uh, that's how it works also you may wanna open uh, your bp plant parent and if you have some function like can interact like in my case uh, I can validate it for example if only my grow progress is greater or equal than 0 0.3 uh, just for example so that player will not be able to plant and collect it momentarily now uh, let's check it I will add uh, a new a new bt item into called tomato tomato and it will be named tomato it will have a thumbnail tomato and uh, will not have item class zero it will be food okay and I will just set my uh, BP tomato my bp tomato plant not bp plant parent i will set that the thing that i'm collecting is a tomato that's it now let's check um, as you can see the uh, biggest part of the video is relying on how inventory system and interaction system is done in your project So sorry that it cannot be created universally. One, two, three, and four. And now let's wait a little bit. First, let's collect a tomato that is not grown. Now, yeah, I can interact with them. And here it is, I received zero tomatoes. That's a problem of my inventory system that I'm displaying that I received zero of something. Also, let's plant one more here. One more here, like this. And let them grow. Now, here I have some progress with green it has green tomatoes let's try to collect them i received four tomatoes maybe it's fine or maybe i should increase this value
I think that I will decrease because collecting green tomatoes should not give me four tomatoes. Now they are on the pre last stage, orange tomatoes. Now I received nine tomatoes. And let's wait until this one, yeah, it has grown. It may have a progress, not one, but it may have a progress of 0, 9, but that's fine. Let's wait a little bit and collect it. And now we receive 10 tomatoes. So that's how it looks like. And uh, to decrease an amount of tomatoes, I will go to BP plant parent and count which amount factor. Here I'm uh, checking if grow progress is between 0 and 0 and half. I will check if it is between 0 and 0 and uh, 6, 65, like, like this. And uh, here I'm dividing grow progress by 4, I will increase it by 3, I will increase it to 4, and it will give me less tomatoes if grow progress is such small. So that's it for this video, thanks for watching.